Kevin. Yeah. Uh, my name is Patrick Coffey. I am a systems administrator at Analog Devices. Uh, and I'm gonna basically go through how we ended up with uh, Tape Gateway. So Analog Devices is what it says up on the screen. Uh, it's a very convoluted way of saying something very fancy. What we really do is, and what we specialize in is anywhere where physics meets digital, analog devices has a place, a solution, or wants to have a solution in that place. Uh, so anytime you're dealing with humidity, uh, altitude, velocity, rotation, uh, we do that well, and, and that's what we're known for. So that's uh, who analog devices is. Uh, that is not me, but I have worn that suit many times. Uh, basically, I'm manufacturing IT, so what my team is responsible for is any manufacturing infrastructure upgrades, any migrations, disaster recovery, which is why I'm here today, uh, manufacturing and test tool support, you know, inside the fab, outside the fab, basically uh, anything that impacts production, manufacturing IT has a hand in. Uh, so that's what I do there. What, uh, what got me up on stage today was this is what it was like uh, before I started. You know, when I started at Analog Devices, I was sort of given the project of the backups, you know, uh, and it was a disaster. Backups were being queued up for days. By the time the, back, the, the data was actually being backed up, the data was no longer valid because it was days old. You know, I, I saw the disaster and I wanted to fix it, so I came up with a couple proposals. You know, I, I came up with the proposal that we go from LTO4 to LTO6. LTO6 has read capability of LTO4, so it wouldn't be that big of a change. We'd be able to slowly migrate uh, to LTO6. I also came up with a virtual tape library, physical on-prem uh, virtual tape library solution. And, uh, and I was also looking at, we use EMC Networker, uh, so I was looking at data domain, I was looking at different software solutions to get dedupe and, and other things that would help with the contention for these queued backups. Uh, at the same time that all of this is happening, oh, all of those got denied, by the way, due to cost. Uh, <laughs> every single one of them. We had a very, we had just gone through an acquisition, so our, our capital expenditure limit was very low. Uh, all of my proposals were sort of shot down. It's very hard to prove revenue with backup software. <laughs> I can, I can, you know, I can talk about potential loss of revenue for days. It never worked. Every single proposal got denied. Uh, so at the same time, we had 30-year-old data. This was a couple years ago. So we had 30-year-old data. I'm 32 years old. I was looking at tapes that were older than I was, that were literally made the month I was born on these nine-track tapes. And boxes and boxes of these were coming into my office every week from uh, Iron Mountain. And so that's my cube on the, on the left there. It's just stacks of these nine-track tapes. Uh, and of course, it's manufacturing, so we can never delete anything. So I was given a project that I needed to convert those nine track tapes to LTO4, which is what that machine on the right does. Uh, needless to say, it, uh, it didn't go according <laughs> to plan. Uh, every time I tried to do a transfer from the nine track tape to LTO4, a black residue would show up on the, the device. And it kept happening, the transfer kept failing, so I called the vendor and I said, this is the situation, how do, I, how do I get this data off of these tapes? And they said, oh, we have a solution for that. I was like, oh, thank God, what is it? They're like, you gotta go out and you gotta buy a bread oven. And you bake the tapes at 140 degrees for seven hours. <laughs> And that'll remagnetize the tapes in order for you to be able to read them. Uh, the only problem with that was that the bread oven was also above the capex <laughs> limit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we weren't really going to put a bread oven in our data center. So I, I kind of 
walked into my manager's office and I was like, we, no, no, we can't do this. Uh, so I, I didn't really have a hard decision to make. It was kind of made for me. It was either buy a bread oven or say no. Um, so I finally got them to get rid of the old 30-year tapes. Uh, so what ended up happening was that our data continued to grow, backups continued to queue up, uh, our hardware was gonna soon be out of contract. You know, anytime you buy, if anyone here has bought hardware, I'm sure you have, uh, you basically, the second you buy it, it starts a timeline. They'll support it for five years and then they'll bleed you dry to support it for another couple years and then after that, no amount of money in the world will help them, will, will get them to support your hardware. So our uh, existing virtual tape library, one of our LTO4 tape libraries and our networker server was all at this point. And so I was tasked with fix this problem without going over CapEx. Uh, the cost of warehousing, the data was also increasing. Obviously, more data means more tapes. More tapes means more warehousing. You know, costs are going up and, and they want costs to go down. It's manufacturing. Uh, so what happened? So a change, we had a big, we had an acquisition, uh, a big acquisition. We had a big change and a push to change the culture. We had a big push and a big reorg which sort of took manufacturing IT and merged it with another group, the systems engineering group, which was uh, already using, you know, whispers of, of cloud computing had been heard in that group. Whereas in the existing manufacturing group, cloud was a deal breaker, everything was on-prem, everything was redundant, no matter what, forever, cloud is never an option. And so, all of a sudden, cloud became an option. I jumped for joy. But, uh, so I started looking up different solutions. I, I ended up looking at, you know, different cloud providers. I ended up with Storage Gateway uh, because it worked the best for what I needed it to do. You know, uh, with the tape gateway, it looks exactly the same in our network or software, in our backup software. Uh, so that means I don't need to train anybody new on how to use it. It looks the same. I don't need new SOPs. Uh, there's no change to customer requirements. All of that stuff stays the same. Uh, and I could also get it off the ground, tested, and set up for minimal cost. So under the capital expenditure limit that we were on, uh, which was huge. So I went to my manager, I said, hey, I could do this. We can set it up, we can test it. And he basically gave me the okay, so I did, and it worked. Uh, so there's a couple things that, that are a little different in manufacturing. Uh, uptime is king. Uh, we had to figure out a way in order to build this out and test it and support it without impacting production at all, like with a 10-foot pole. So uh, luckily with Tape Gateway, it was very easy to set up a redundant backup environment where we could run these backups redundantly without touching our manufacturing environment. We can do a, a uh, proof of concept. The proof of concept could be approved and uh, all without going over what we were currently spending on what it costs to vault our tapes every month. Uh, so as you can see, the picture on the left is our current physical backup environment. The vast majority of that hardware is no longer supported and there's no amount of money in the world that will get HP to support it any longer. Uh, and then the, the picture on the right is the AWS-based backup environment. Uh, as you can see, the, the picture on the left, a lot more can go wrong with that from a hardware perspective. So the one on the right makes me feel better, uh, in manufacturing at least. So uh, 
where do we go from here? Our next steps are, we, like we just completed redundancy, so we're completely redundant on running both physical tape backups and virtual tape backups to AWS. Uh, the proof of concept has been approved. We, we got the go ahead to start shutting down uh, our physical tape backups. And our, my goal is to be completely off of physical tapes within one year. Uh, I think that would be great because we waste a lot of time on you know, tape libraries and you know, sending tapes to Iron Mountain, doing tape manifests, all of that stuff. All of that gets cut out of the equation with AWS. It's very simple to go in and do whatever you need to do from web UI as opposed to going across the street to the physical tape library, uh, as well as you know, uh, working with AWS. These, these guys have been super helpful in adding features, listening to, to our requirements, what we'd like to see. Uh, and it's, it's nice to have somebody who actually listens and then implements the solutions that you provide. You know, I, I've talked to many companies and given them plenty of good ideas, and they just say yes, 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 and then you never see it in the actual product, whereas uh, a couple times now, you guys have surprised us with stuff actually being in the next release after we say something. So.